You see, Harold, I feel that much of the world's sorrow comes from people who are this. Yeah. Allow themselves to be treated as that. Well, I think it's fine building jumbo planes. Yeah, it's a mysterious thing about how music is so powerful. I believe it's something to do with kind of the, the, the longing that human beings have for unification with something higher and more harmonious than their existence and their mundane lives. And wanting to grasp that somehow becomes possible through the vehicle of music. Tell me, where do the children play? Growing up in the West End of London, you know, obviously affected me by having so much, you know, theatre and musicals and, and uh, coffee bars with, with jukeboxes blaring out. I mean, that, that was like, music was the background to my life. And at first I wanted to be an artist, so I used to spend hours and hours painting, but I'd always have, like, a record playing. It used to be my sister's collection bit of Frank Sinatra, a little bit of Tchaikovsky. And then, of course, the Beatles came along and the whole powerful, you know, explosion of self-expression and liberation, in a way, for my generation began. And I wanted to be with it. I picked up, if you like, the folk sort of style in the beginning because, you know, it was so simple. I didn't need a band, I didn't need uh, drums or anything like that, just me and the, you know, the guitar. My whole ambition really was to express myself now in, uh, in words and music, and, and it was just natural. I just didn't think twice. But learning music was frightening to me because it might stop the flow of creativity, and I didn't want to be held down by technical issues. You know, I wanted to just write with flow. I kind of learned things myself. You know, and, and I'd kind of work out the chords to something. And then when I couldn't learn, I was like, forget it, I'll write my own song. <laughs> you know, that's why I never sang anybody else's songs. But I thought, you know, I never made any mistakes that way. I was always, uh, you know, painting pictures and telling stories my, with my songs. And so it was kind of natural that I wanted my songs a lot of the time to be seen as well. And uh, originally I wanted, you know, to write a musical writing about the Russian Revolution. You know, it was a story of Nicholas and Alexander. And so uh, I always used to be driving back across my manager, you know, to try and get my musical on, on stage. But then <clears throat> um, films were the next thing. So um, he came to me one day with the script uh, about Harold and Maud, you know, and I, I thought, well, yeah, that's a good idea, because films, you know, great extension. So um, and I started reading this script and I was bowled over by the, by the humor of this. It was so dark were very similar to my, my kind of humour. And he said that this, uh, this director, you know, was interested in some of our music. So um, he seemed to be living with these two albums, you know, Mona Bone Jack and, and Tea for the Tillerman. And I, th I think when he made the film, looking at the rushes, uh, he never stopped playing my records at the time. You know, he kept on putting on my records while he was watching the film. And so it became a kind of indelible part of, of the vision uh, that he saw. So often long you go The seconds stick the time out There's so much left to know And I'm on the road to find out I think my music had a particular leaning towards the kind of whole subject of the film, which was to do, in a way, with, um, you know, faking one's death, you know, or, or you know, playing with the, the idea of, um, of death, the whole idea that you're going to you know, leave this planet. And so there are threads of similarity in just the, the approach um, which, you know, Harold had towards life, which was, you know, to, um, to get as close as possible to the edge, to find out something, you know, that he, he didn't know. But I was a, a little bit cautious, I said, but hang on, this is a comedy and my music is quite serious, you know. I take it quite seriously. So um, the juxtaposing of songs, you know, in film, uh, it's kind of dangerous business because as a writer, you know, you've got your own vision <laughs> and along comes a director who kind of sees it in this other way. And um, 
I wasn't certain if we were going to do this or we were going to say yes. So he really wanted to convince me, Hal wanted to convince me that this was the right thing. So he invited me to San Francisco where they were filming it and, and watching the rushes. And then, you know, we were sitting in there as he was puffing on his little whatever it was. And um, he's saying, look at this. And then, you know, and there was, I think it was Miles from Nowhere and the hearse, you know, and I went, oh, that's good. I won't meet it when I reach the end. There's that great moment where it doesn't describe what's going on, and it shouldn't in some way, but there's a spirit, there's a meaning, there's something so subtle about the core of that song, which, which hits that string and that C. It tells you everything about it. when there's that striking moment of creativity where, you know, when two talents come together, um, the visionary of the director and the music, and of course the artists and the actors themselves. But when that happens really perfectly, then it's memorable, you know. And if you want to be high, be high. If you want to be low, be low. Cause there's a million ways to go, you know that there are. And if you want to be me, be me. If you want to be you, be you. Cause there's a million things to do, you know that there are.